Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video. You've probably heard about the PlayStation 4K as well as the Xbox One and a Half, also known as, of course, the intermediary upgrades that we're supposedly going to be seeing for this generation of consoles. As you're probably aware, these supposed upgrades will bring faster GPUs, more powerful CPUs, more memory, and so on for games developers to bring more visually impressive games to us. Now, we've already talked quite a bit about the PlayStation 4K, and I'll link a previous article that I did just a few days ago regarding some leaks on that subject on the, P on the PS4K's GPU and some other information. And we do have a small update on that uh, same system, but I wanted to primarily focus at the start on the Xbox One and a half, because Phil Spencer has actually discussed this um, in a recent interview. During this interview, um, he was asked quite simply, are Microsoft thinking of doing the same thing as Sony? Because obviously, generally speaking, companies, at least to a degree, follow what their competitors are doing, right, in the marketplace. Well, he said that he doesn't know if Sony are, in reality, creating the PlayStation 4.5 or PlayStation 4K or whatever it ends up being called. But he's unhappy, he's not particularly enthralled by the idea of Microsoft doing it. He says, and I quote, I'm not a big fan of the Xbox One and a half. If we're going to move things forward, I want to move forward with big numbers. For us, our Xbox is doing well, it performs, it's reliable, and our servers are doing well. If we're going to go forward with anything, I want it to be a really substantial upgrade for people. An upgrade. Now, obviously this is a fairly short and sweet quote, but what it basically indicates is what he had said before about the idea of an upgradable Xbox was just an upgrade, and maybe in the future they were going to consider it with... What the hell is the next Xbox going to be called? Are we going to call it the Xbox 2? That sounds terrible. Well, whatever. I guess the next console may potentially have an upgrade functionality built in and I've said before and I'll say it again I'd love just simply an upgrade slot that you can simply put in a I don't know card or some type of uh, cartridge type of thing you simply slot that in and it will give you an upgrade this is very similar to what the Saturn had the N64 and other consoles previously and then you can do it very much like the TikTok strategy from Intel back in the day. I say back in the day because now, of course, we know that Intel have just abandoned TikTok. So, for example, what you could see is year one and two, the next year the, the console is released in year one. Year two, it's left to fend for its own devices. Year three, let's say halfway through that year, they release the upgrade car. Year four, obviously, the upgrade car is helping with the games. And year five, we see a next console. That could potentially be one way to go. In Sony's case, this intermediary step they've got is quite interesting because it's really polarizing a lot of opinions on the internet. So I actually am quite excited about it. But I understand why some people, some folks, are actually a bit pissed. Because, A, it's not a big step forward for the console. It's more power, yes. And we've discussed all this before. It's about twice the speed in terms of the GPU. But is twice the speed really a massive upgrade, considering Sony could potentially be asking 400 to 500 US dollars? Now, you may recall that we got a lot of information, <coughs> excuse me, from a NeoGAF user by the name of Osiris Black. Now, he mentioned originally that PlayStation 4 Ks or PS4.5, whatever it ends up being called once again, will have a GPU about twice the speed that of the original PS4. But he did offer a little bit of extra information regarding what he believes, what he perceives to be the performance of the machine. He says, and this is going to be a small quote, also the word sacrifices are being well, blown well out of proportion. There are sacrifices made when making a console version of a game as compared to a PC game, or when making an Xbox One game as a compared to a PS4 game. Don't expect PS4 games all of a sudden to become, and I quote, shit, just expect them to run better on the PS4K. I would expect a game that's really pushing the graphical envelope at 1080p 60fps on the PS4K might ha have the same game running at 900p at maybe 60 to 30 fps on the PS4. Just the way I look at it, end quote. Which, 
obviously goes pretty much hand in hand to what you'd expect. If you're running 1080p, 60fps, we know as a verbatim fact, that means that the GPU has, well, half the amount of time as if the GPU ha is trying to render the same game at 1080p at 30fps, that's why a lot of titles now are running at 30fps. So that's absolutely fine and I completely and utterly understand where he's coming from. What do I think of this? Do I think Microsoft are making the right choice? Well, it's too difficult to know. I mean, leave your comments. What do you What do you think? Let's just suppose for a moment the PS4K is real. Let's not argue whether it's real or not. Let's assume for the purpose of this video, for this question, it's real. Would you be happy to pay $400, $500 for an intermediary upgrade or would you prefer Microsoft's way? Now, definitely, there are problems with both. If you go Microsoft's route, where they don't want in a, I guess, half-generation upgrade, let's say for the sake of argument we see the next console from Sony, well, the PS4K in Q1 2017, which is supposedly when the system's going to launch. Maybe Microsoft is saying, if you're reading between the lines, well, yeah, we're going to release another console. He's, Phil's not saying they're not. In fact, he's saying the reverse. If you read between the lines, Phil is actually saying we want a big upgrade. We don't want a small upgrade. And if you also read between the lines, if you look at what Microsoft have done in the PC space, if you look what Microsoft have done in uh, conferences, what they've said in conferences, what they've said at GDC, what they've said at uh, Build, what they've said just generally to gamers, whether they're answering tweets, whether it's in interviews, what have you. They know virtual reality is obviously a big deal, but they want to push towards high graphical standards in games. They know, for example, HDR, which is obviously high dynamic range lighting, which we've discussed ad nauseum, so I won't go into that. It's going to become incredibly important, maybe even more so than 4K TVs over the next year or two. What I'm saying is that I think Microsoft are going to have an upgrade for the Xbox One, but I think it's going to be the next generation Xbox. I would not be surprised, and I'm throwing it out there, I'm not saying it will, but I'm going to say that it would be very probable it's going to be a very similar architecture, it's going to have a very similar GPU, it's going to have a very similar CPU, so it's going to be x86, it's going to have a very similar GPU base, but they're going to be substantially more powerful. So for the sake of argument, we could be seeing something along the lines of a Navi-based GPU for Microsoft in the next generation system from AMD. Because it's, once again, it's an evolution of GCN. We could see that. I'm not saying we will, but we could see a Polaris-based card which has a lot more shaders in it. So for the sake of argument, Microsoft could be saying, OK, Sony, you win right now. You've got more power. We don't want to fight you. We don't want to re-release the system. We're just going to push the Xbox One as we are. We're going to, you know, just go crazy with it, release as many games as we can, but keep the price as low as possible, cost reduce the unit as much as possible, and for high-end users, for the folks who are willing to spend $500, $600, $700, $800, they're actually kind of covered, because NVIDIA and AMD and Intel are actually covering them with the fact that they're releasing... 14 NM GPUs and CPUs respectively, which are going to have a lot of performance. In Microsoft uh, Court, really, and something we've discussed previously, they don't really have a loser. Because if the PC market, just for the sake of argument, smacks the console market, they don't care. They're the winners. If the Xbox smacks the PlayStation, they don't care. They're the winners. What they don't want is to fall really far behind in terms of Xbox numbers, and they also don't want to fall way behind on PC technology now, so that's why they're kind of straddling the fence. So my guess is we're going to see a follow-up to the Xbox One, because it makes a lot of sense for them. They're not going to abandon the Xbox brand, it makes absolutely no logical sense at all, because for them it's a cheap, easy way for gamers to get involved in the Windows 10 ecosystem. It's a cheap, easy way for them to get people building games and for them to get that cash, get that revenue from the Windows Store, for people to actually get involved in the ecosystem, it just makes a great deal of sense. That's why we're starting to see 
the likes of the Xbox One development kit starting to open up where you can turn your Xbox One into a developer machine. That's why they've started to um, unify the various platforms somewhat. That's why they're starting even to have porting where you can just port a, a Win32 code to a UWP. And while now they're even starting to get emulators where you can bloody well do iOS on your on your uh, desktop, that's why they're starting to do that because they want to bring people into the fold, so to speak. Now, I'm not saying that they're doing things right because ultimately, I don't know if there is a right and wrong decision at this point. The reason I say that is because it's very, very, very tempting what Sony are doing. I can definitely see why they're doing it. And because Sony as well have different priorities for now for Microsoft, A, they don't have, co uh, they don't have PCs, so, there's that. I mean, technically, I guess they could. They could maybe team up with, with Valve, but that's just not going to happen. So, reality-wise, all Sony have of themselves and their own exclusives and their own platform, and they need to tout that as much as possible. And the other big thing is because Sony are releasing the PlayStation VR headset, which we do know is going to work with PCs, supposedly. That's what Sony are telling us. But even if they don't end up working with PCs, they still have the headset. And they're going to want that to look as visually impressive as possible. So therefore, they may want to say, well, yeah, we've also got a machine for high-end gamers. But we've got the basic level entry PS4 for the mid-range standard gamers. Let me know your thoughts on this one. I honestly don't think either company has a right and wrong approach. I just think it's going to be very, very interesting how the next couple of years play out. And I think for now, we're actually seeing one of the more interesting turns in the console market, maybe even back what it was in the 16-32-bit era where companies were actually trying new and exciting things. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.